Ladies and gents, welcome back. <laughs> what a what an interesting week we've been having. Sorry, running a few minutes late. I think I'm wow, four minutes late for my own live stream. Terrible, terrible. I, I, how rude of me. And my mic is falling all over the place. Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back, and we are <laughs> recapping this week in news. Holy, holy. Let's get to some of this. I need to plug in my mic. If you're watching this uh, live, welcome to the live show. If you are watching this later, uh, this is the live show. You're, you're listening to the live show being broadcast to you at another time. And uh, welcome anyhow. Uh, say hello in the chat and say hello in the comments down below. But as I, I, I don't know, I fill people in every time on the, on the weekends, how this works. So throughout the course of the week, I do videos in the morning and I cover as much news as possible. Uh, whatever I feel like I can actually tell a whole story of a lot of time. I'm just researching stuff, uh, until I, until I get what I, what I consider to be a full story and then I'll put it out for you guys. So I just crack out as much as I can. Uh, before I go to work, and then on Friday evenings, I get you guys to come on in and join me in the live show. Say hello, everybody, and uh, that's that's how this works. So here we are, here we are, and we're just waiting for people. Obviously, so many people getting the notifications, but it takes a moment to get filed in so we can talk about all the things. I'm not getting a chat refresh on that. Stream page, hmm, hmm, not getting that. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Oh well, I'll rely on the chat window over here. I'd like to get that going. There we go. Hey, hey, now we're getting some analytics. We're seeing who's in here. Now, <laughs> quick question, quick question. What was the most important story of the week for you guys? Um, I, I could tell you judging by the analytics was, uh, Justin Trudeau's trip to the European Union. That was, uh, that was quite the, uh, embarrassment of, of all times. I still looking at this headline. I have it up here. CBC lies. The CBC claims that Justin Trudeau received a standing ovation for his speech in the EU, failing to mention that over nine tenths of the parliament left in protest before he began it's just like oh oh brutal this guy this guy just nobody seems to like him he's the you know the counter coward of the cottage getting himself out there in front of <laughs> it's funny when he's hanging out in front of his wef buddies if he goes to davos he maybe has a little bit easier time but now he's He's in front of actual representatives, you know, um, people that people vote for these people <laughs> and they represent the people. Uh, Justin Trudeau, not not accustomed to that arrangement, as it seems. But yes, what a, <laughs> what an embarrassing week for the the we the we we tyrant. The wee tyrant man. Interesting stuff. But yeah, a bunch of stories I couldn't get to. Um, some stuff that I was doing research on, and I'm, I'm still, I'm not sure if I've got a full story for it. But we could talk about it this week. Uh, well, tonight. We can talk about it tonight in this live stream. Um, do, 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 do. Lots of stories. Uh, this one, this one really made me laugh today uh toronto star i didn't get to read the article because it's always locked and i'm sorry toronto star but i don't want to pay for your terrible publication so i'll just read the headline in the first couple of words and then just uh click back on the search browser and then just take it from whoever plagiarized you because that's the name of the game in journalism these days read somebody else's article and then publish their article just in your own words right this is uh it's that or learn to code. Was it really about vaccine mandates or something darker? Something darker. 
<laughs> the inside story of the convoy protests. A Canadian protest movement appeared to be fueled by opposition to COVID-19 restrictions, but conspiracy theories swirl just below the surface. <laughs> These writers, they should really be writing for fiction. Some of the some of the stuff that they come up with, I mean, I mean, it is it is fiction. <laughs> I mean, what else do you call this? It is fiction. But, uh, you know, you probably sell more copies if you did it for, you know, did it in a, you know, <laughs> paperback version, get it published, make sure it's on every grocery store shelf and put a scary clown face on it because <laughs> it is clown world, folks. For three weeks this winter, a so-called, you know, we need the, um, we need that trailer guy in a world, in a world where COVID-19 seems to be the problem, but just under the surface, there's terror. <laughs> it's just, it's absurd. It's absurd. I love it. So I couldn't read the whole article, so I'm going to X that one out. Here's, here's a similar article that I thought was kind of funny. Uh, instead that I that I can read a majority of the Ottawa the Ottawa convoy showed exactly who Canada is and we can't just move on yeah <laughs> it just cracks me up so uh what what angle do they have on this one how are you gonna smear a bunch of people and, I, and this is this is the best way that they do it they're gonna the writers will smear the an entire movement because if you smeared an individual like this it's it's called libel <laughs> you can get sued for it so what they do is they sue they smear an entire group or category of people and then they're they're okay they can do that look look at trudeau's eyes hatred or barely coping yeah he's he's out to lunch he's out to lunch i think he's just he's got his lines you know the puppet master in davos he's got his lines what he can do uh, but we'll get we'll get to that. We will get to that. The Ottawa convoy has left, but Canadians have lost. As the waters recede, we're still trying to come to grips with how for three weeks the city, where the power of the federal government sits, was able to so easily be so easily occupied by a convoy of truckers who entered Ottawa under the guise of opposing man vaccine mandates while canada continues to contend with the fallout it's clear that the convoy the country is not ready to face the white supremacist seditious elements within <laughs> you, can't, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up folks this is from yahoo news this is actually published by a person right erica ilfil She's got her. She's got a full fill. You know what I mean? Like she's she's got she got the full fill on <laughs> her whatever university she went to. Jeez, wasted some money. Wasted some money on a crappy education. Folks, get into the trades. <laughs> no, they don't teach you this stuff in the trades. I'll tell you that. Uh, where are we? The extremist elements that have been emboldened by Donald Trump's president. Why are we talking about Donald Trump's presidency? This is Canada. These writers, they're just really reaching, 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 reaching. Trump's presidency around the world are here to stay in Canada for some reason, because Canadians and Donald Trump, that's a thing. And that's the fear. That it'll happen again. I'm a black Canadian columnist born in Ontario and raised in Alberta. Because that only matters to people who think that I, you know, this the, your identity is defined by your your race, creed, or color. Most people don't think that way. This is uh that's absurd. So when that when those are the most important things for you, you have to mention it in your own article. And I could see something rising in the tide of hate. Yet, when I write about it, I talk about it. I often feel I'm screaming into a void. <laughs> you know, you're screaming. You're screaming. You are screaming into a void. You're screaming into something. I, I just, and and this is the this is the thing, folks. 
I read through these articles to find news for you guys, and I have to find myself in these articles reading this garbo. It's absolute garbo. Actually, this one this one was sent to me by someone named Nicholas. And thank you, Nicholas. Uh, someone's uh, no, not Nicholas. Somebody else. Nicholas sent me something else. I'm gonna share that later. Uh, someone sent me this and said, oh, we should sue them." <laughs> well, you can't. You can't because they're uh, they're clearly they're covered because you're talking about a swath of people, not individuals. CBC lies. Amanda Furfer lies on CBC. Excuse me. I'm not sure what who that is, that reporter. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you. They, it, <laughs> it's hard to find a, a, a CBC reporter that's going to tell you the, the God's honest truth. You're, you're hard-pressed. You're hard-pressed. They are there. There's one guy that followed uh, the Trudeau regime through Europe for the CBC, and he said he had some he had some truth bombs of his own, and he had some hard hitting questions. I'm I'll, I won't be surprised if he doesn't work for the CBC very soon. That's uh, that's definitely ugh, that's the way she goes, you know. That's that's just the way she goes. I need to pop out this chat. Let me get this into a better location so I can see and read it a little better. Maybe increase the size of it. Hey, hey. wow, look at that. I can see. I got my old eyes. My old eyes. I can't. I can't see things that great anymore. That's why I wear these glasses. And I need a new set because my son broke them today. Just being one of them guys. What's up, Clyde? Hey, what's up, Aaron? How you doing? Sorry, just getting the chat in order <laughs> so I can read this stuff. Love having you guys around, though. Uh... These these live streams are super fun. I really enjoy them. Uh, get into some of these uh, ridiculous articles and ridiculous stories that, you know, some of them, they're, they're not enough to make a video about, or maybe they are. Maybe I could just make videos about this stuff, like this ridiculous <laughs> article. Um, but yeah, I, I, I try to stick on topic. So, you know, don't mind if on the live streams I, I go a little off on some of these ones. While there has been a course of radical opposition to the government's sanctioned injustice, mostly by people of color, white Canadians aren't used to aggressive protests or those that reflect scenes of clashes with the police that are more commonly in American demonstrations of civil disobedience. The larger white society is also not used to grappling with blatant white supremacy. They are not used to anything but peace, order, and good government. <laughs> well, well, we're used to yeah, we're used to peace, order, and good government, and then we didn't get good government, and <laughs> and in protest, we we saw just how not good of a government there were. Oh, and they had to double down and put this, they had to quote themselves in their own article. You know, when you quote yourself in your own article, that's a, a special level of mediocrity. <laughs> that's a special, like that person, that person got the, uh, the attendance award in school. You know what I mean? Like that, that is a person that when... <laughs> you know when you don't have anything nice to say people don't people just say thanks for coming <laughs> that, that person yeah definitely got the participation award i've been writing about the threat of white supremacy for about five years Sorry, I was just checking to make sure that I'm still in okay good books on YouTube here for some of the words that are being used in this article. Get your ham radio today. That's too funny. Tetris Freak. Hey, buddy, I haven't seen you in a minute. Need for attention. That's absolutely it. It's this need for attention. I mean, this is not based in reality, right? This is not based in, this is not someone who's writing about having been to the protest. <laughs> This is about, this is something else. This is, 
<laughs> Tell him to keep screaming into that void. That's right. <laughs> oh, killing me. Killing me. Yeah, just keep screaming into that void. You're writing into a void right now. <laughs> oh, good God. Oh, what am I... <laughs> I've been writing about the threat of white supremacy for about five years. In that time, the country has multiple far-right extremist tragedies. In 2017, Quebec mosque shooting where gunmen killed six worshippers and seriously injured five. What? Why is that white supremacy? I don't get that. Toronto van attack in 2018 was a driver targeted female pedestrians in an act of misogynistic terrorism. What? That wasn't white supremacy. That was... That was a misogynistic terror. Okay, so that kid was obviously had mental illness. That was a mental illness case. Wow, you're really, really picking it out of the weeds with this one. Because I know that case. I'm not familiar with the other case. I know that there was one recently, and it turned out to it was an it was not a white person that did that. Or family members of Islamic phobic hate crime. Yeah, see, this is when what happens when you look at the entire world in the through the lens of race. All you see is racism. I mean, it's just. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, they encourage you to support. True. Wow. Yeah, the bad guy, the batty bads. I've got, I've got some on that tonight. I'm gonna talk about that, uh, Mister Dupont. And we'll be talking about that. Um, but yeah. Uh, like I said, when when you look through the world, uh, the story continues. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna give up on that one. No thanks. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction that doesn't ha it's, it, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. And, and I say this because I grew up in Canada. I've, I've grown up in many towns in Canada. I grew up in Windsor, Ontario, melting pot of multiculturalism. Mo you know, a lot of my friends growing up were of different races and colors and creeds and religions and whatever nobody cared it wasn't a thing we had the carousel of nations in windsor ontario and every year each uh each community because there was like these uh cultural centers right there was like the scottish club the croatian club the indian club the turkish club the whatever right they had all of them indian club and people would people would go and visit all the different cultural centers uh, during the Carousel of Nations and try each other's cultural foods and and all of this stuff. It was great. Evening, evening, Mike T. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a, <clears throat> a little <clears throat> in the throat, but yeah, <laughs> this uh, this new phenomena of like all of a sudden everything is about race and and religious uh marginalization like what since when when did that happen that just came out of nowhere it snuck up behind everybody and and uh <laughs> from went from a moment where nobody cared about it to all of a sudden a few people care a lot about it that never had anything really bad go in in their favor but that's that's a thing Pretty sure that the majority of the world is accepting of racial and ethnic differences, but the government wants us to believe otherwise. I agree with that. I agree with that, Dave. Yeah, no, the um, the idea here is that, yeah, we, we, we're all hating each other. There's supremacy of all sorts. And uh, yeah, no, it just, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Show it to me. And especially if, you, if you're saying that it's systemic, well, then show me the law. Show me the law that says that, and I'll help you fight it. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on it. If there's a law that's racist, I'm, I want it gone. I definitely want it gone. Most people don't notice, because like, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm a white guy. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, you know, people throw that. People not knowing my situation throw that label at me. But I, I I'm in a, a 
multiracial marriage and we have mixed children and it's it's really funny because um yeah i don't know i just i hadn't noticed <laughs> yeah right i hadn't noticed but how can you tell right how can you tell you can't you can't really because like the the amount of people that i've met that come from some other religion that you you don't you don't know what religion people are in you you can't tell that's that's on the surface stuff judging people by the way they look is called discrimination and i don't agree with it i think you should uh yeah right you're white oh my god um yeah i i think judging people by their appearance is called discrimination i don't agree with that and um i'm going to i'm going to stick to that one I'm definitely sticking to my guns on that. But uh <laughs> yeah. Back to back to good old JT cuz that picture just popped up in my window. Are you surprised that Europeans don't want Trudeau's advice on how to fight tyranny? What? What? Oh, that's the face. That is the face when uh you're talking to an empty room. <laughs> I couldn't help it. That, that made me laugh so much when I saw that. I'm not going to lie. But hearing the speeches, and I, I want to... Uh, there was... Yeah, there's Miss... Miss Anderson. Mrs. Anderson. Christina Anderson. Amazing. She had this great speech. But she had the other one. Let's find her other speech. Just bear with me one moment. Uh, because hers went viral. Christina Anderson. She had her, her video that went viral, which I thought was really funny. Um, Butts was trending again today. And I, and I tell you guys, I go on Twitter so you guys don't have to. That's the, <laughs> just keep telling you that. <laughs> This is uh, yesterday, Canada's prime minister visited the EU. I'm going to get my headphones on for this. But this is her speech. Let's have a listen again, because this is just so good. Mr. Trudeau, you are a disgrace for any democracy. Please spare us your presence. <laughs> this is so good. Oh, we got the. Oh, this is an edited version. I see. I see. Dun, 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 I will dun, now dun, dun, give dun. the floor to Miss Christine Anderson for her point. Oh, okay. So there's the whole speech. This clip is so good. Thank you. Based on Article 195, out that it would have been more appropriate for Mr. Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, to address this House according to Article 144, an article which was specifically designed to debate violations of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law, which is clearly the case with Mr. Trudeau. Oh, then again, a Prime Minister who openly admires the Chinese basic dictatorship who tramples on fundamental rights by persecuting and criminalizing his own citizens as terrorists terrorists just because they dared to stand up to his perverted concept of democracy should not be allowed to speak in this house at all. Mr. Trudeau, you are a disgrace for any democracy. Please spare us your presence. Thank you. Awesome. That, that was just too good. Too good. Read, read the Romanian MP. Um, what was his name? It was like Tez, Terez, what was his name? The Romanian MP. I know who you're talking about. I saw his tweet. I'm going to have to find that. Hmm, I had that. Terez, that's right. Boom. That was a really good one. That was actually really good. So he actually did not go in and do a speech again because he'd done a speech previously. Uh, but what he did, and I'll try to find it because I think I might have it saved over here somewhere, somewhere. But uh, he did a speech previously railing on Justin Trudeau during the convoy. Yeah, there he is right there. Let me pop that up. So this is this is when he did the speech 
at the time, but then he released a uh, a statement. But he didn't release it on Twitter. This is the this is the hard part, right? He released it somewhere else. I don't know where. I found it from somebody else on Twitter. Calls for Trudeau regime isolation. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'd have to find that one. That one, it was on Twitter. And so Twitter blows up on me as soon as I start posting stuff and then I get a bunch of people. Yeah, he had it. Oh, you had it. One second. Okay, well, if you have the link, then send it to me. Assuming YouTube allows links. If not, you can send it in Discord. Put it in the uh, in the general chat or something in Discord and let me know that it's in there. But yeah, Christian Terez also did a speech. And then um, uh, the, there was another uh, member of European Parliament from uh, Croatia. And I'm... I, it was, uh, his name was so hard to pronounce. <laughs> I forget how to, I forget how to pronounce it. But, um, he did another good speech, but he did it in, in Croatian. So I translated it in one of my videos. So definitely go check that out. That was a really good one as well. Put a like to the video, please. Yes, please. Get those likes up. Tell, tell YouTube that, you approve of this message. That is, uh, yeah, that's the thing. So I've got a bunch of things that I wanted to cover, but I always get scatterbrained, and then I go on these tangents. And the tangents, the tangents are fun. Don't don't get me wrong. It's a lot of fun hanging out with you guys, and then just looking at a bunch of stuff. I've been going quite long in the past uh, past couple of streams. We'll see how long we go this time. Uh, you gotta share this meme. Because I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> Stop eating meat and pay more taxes to change the weather. <laughs> just, <laughs> that, that, one really, that one really stuck with me. I don't know why. That one really killed me. <laughs> just some of the memes that people share in our in our Discord server just, just knock me out and kill me. So <laughs> Gotta share them. We've got a bunch of stories this week, and it's funny. I'll go back and look at some of the other stories that I I had. The news changes so quickly. You got to keep up on it or you're hooped. Pay money or disable ad block. No, I'll just do neither and just block the ads. Thanks. I don't get to see your pictures. That's fine. This from the Ottawa Citizen. Masks should stay on in school. CHEO chief of staff says this is a funny part everybody's over covid it's done like get over it just straight up get over it the rest of the world's moved on uh it's no longer the the thing to support of the day like it, it seems like you have like npcs or their wi-fi's like m malfunction they need to like unplug for 30 seconds plug back in so their wi-fi can connect to the network again so they can realize that all the npcs are being told to redirect to another uh i support this in the current moment <laughs> but there's a bunch of them that are like nah i'm still on that mask thing masking up protect us from the uh the thing that uh is transmissible no matter what <laughs> you're not getting around it but uh like, oh, you need a mask to save us from those eyebrows, lady. <laughs> At this point, I believe the wisest course is for masks to stay on at schools while we wait to see what happens with the lifting of protective strategies. Well, the thing we should do is keep the protective strategies and wait to see what happens with the protective strategies, says says <laughs> Mrs. Bean. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, <laughs> with COVID-related emissions ticking up again at CHEO. What is CHEO, by the way? Child health. What? 
It's it's not telling me. Okay, C H E O. At Chio, anyone in the chat know what Chio? Mislav Kolakushich. That was the hardest thing to pronounce. I I messed it up in my video for sure. Yeah, Mislav Kolakushich. It's Eastern European names are so difficult for me. I'm sorry. I just don't have uh, I don't have the the tongue for that. And it's funny. Oh, Child Hospital in Ottawa. Oh, okay, Child Hospital. With related admissions ticking up once again at the Child Hospital in Ottawa, the pediatric hospital chief of staff is urging students and teachers to continue wearing masks at school to protect themselves and the most vulnerable. Well, okay, is it at school or is it at the, is it at the hospital? At this point, I believe the wisest course is for masks to stay on at schools while we wait to see what happens with the lifting of protective strategies. Because, you know... There, there are there are many many studies to show that the negative the negative effects on children's health growing up by having masks and not being able to see other children's faces. We'll just ignore that entirely, right? The only reason why you put masks on kids is to inherit this fear and obedience into their life. Not even today's twenty year olds are a tad bit confused, but now we get new kids, new kids. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It's conditioning. I'm not, I'm not, not on board, not, not down with it. And it's funny because like, well, I mean, it's not funny. It's tragic that there's all these children in these communities out there that uh, their only social life is school. And that's sad. So like I, um, the Romanian MP is Cosmin. There's no way I'm pronouncing that name. There are too many consonants in a row. I, I don't know what sound that makes. There is a... Wow, how many letters in that word? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten letters and two vowels. How do you pronounce that? D-Z-S-U-R-D-Z-S-A. Zurza. <laughs> Zurza. Maybe. I'm probably so far off. I'm probably so far off. But the, here's the thing. So kids need need to socialize with each other. And I know a lot of the time, like the the, the excuse for not uh, homeschooling your kids is that they need to socialize. Well, home, the, the, where's the rule that says that homeschool kids don't, don't, are not allowed to socialize? Like, what if you have many families that, homeschool their kids and then they go to each other's homes for different learning classes this is why we have communities don't rely on the government to form your own community form your own community <laughs> this is this is this is the thing like when um it's it's when people don't form their own communities that the governments can come in and be so heavy-handed it's it's when you're you're self-reliant that that you get these these uprisings when government starts cracking down and if you get the uprisings from people they're like nah no i'm good i don't and you know i'm being polite by allowing so much but you know enough is enough you get to a point and then it's like you know your goodwill is worn out and i i had this discussion with my wife because she's from japan and we lived in japan and in japan it's commonplace to wear masks when you have when you have a cold or you have the flu or something because you got to go on with your day. You live in close proximity with so many people. And you live with so many people in close proximity that you, when you got to go on with your day, you just, you're doing it as a polite thing to wear a mask so you don't get other people sick. You're not, nobody's wearing a mask. <laughs> this, is, this is, the, this is the, the misconception that happens for so many people. When they go to Japan, they see people wearing masks. They think they're germaphobes because... The, the self-centered approach of looking at it is, is not how it's seen there. It's more about, I wear this so I don't get other people sick. I'm, I'm helping not spread whatever I've got. Um, so we were so close to having that in Canada. We were like this close. Um, to the point where, you know, my, my wife and I were talking about it. And we're like, oh, okay, well, this, this might lead to a good like culture of people wearing masks when they get sick. 
And then we had this conversation just uh, the other week. And I said, they just killed it. They just destroyed it. All that goodwill out the window. Now, if somebody wears a mask after this COVID thing's over, people are just going to assume that that person's a jerk. <laughs> like, that is the assumption that it's going to be. This person is just a jerk. They're some sort of Karen, germaphobe, crazy, uh, some sort of NPC. <laughs> Can't think for themselves. Stay away from this guy. He's going to be a problem. Don't want to walk down the aisle when this guy's down the aisle. You know what I mean? People will avoid you like the plague um, just for wearing a mask. So we've, we've destroyed the opportunity of having that culture in Canada where, it, yeah, stay home if you're sick. Well, you got to move. You got you got stuff to do. You can't always stay home when you just got to got the sniffles. But yeah, I mean, if you put on a mask, people are just going to think you're a jerk. <laughs> I mean, that's the sad reality of it. That's the sad reality of it. Unfortunate, unfortunate. But yeah, so people are still advocating for masks for children. And that's that's just horrendous. Forget it. Get out of my get out of town. Get out of here. I don't want to hear that. But you know what I want to hear more of? No, that was a bad segue. Uh, I'm trying to look at some of these stories that I wanted to bring up. And some of them, some of them I covered and some of them I didn't cover yet. And some of them I was like, uh, do I share that? Nah. No, not a big deal. But, uh, oh yeah. There we go. This morning and we're shocked to learn they have a new NDP Liberal government that is planning to spend and tax unlike anything we've seen before. Now things are starting to make sense. Now we understand why the NDP have been so eager to prop up the Liberals and their unethical behaviour. It's because they have been cooking up a secret backroom deal. My question to the leader of the new NDP Liberal Party is this. When did he start these secret talks with his new Deputy Prime Minister, the member for Burnaby South? Was it before, during, or just after the last election? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Okay, so platitudes. I'm sorry, I gotta call the Conservatives out on this one, but like, where were you? Where were you in this? You platitudes just it's so much i mean they, these guys are supposed to be the opposition but they're just watching it all happen like uh it's i'm i'm so frustrated with them because they're they've they're so neutered as a um as a party they just they have the they have the opportunity to seize the day and they're just like but but my political positions, I'm just going to wait and see. I'm going to just see what the waters look like. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm going to sit sit around and I'm going to wait and I'm, I'm not going to take a principled stand on anything. I'm just going to follow the, the polls and see what happens with the, the popular thing in the moment. And uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to let it all play out and then I'll do my political play so I can get reelected by the same people who always reelect the conservatives, you know, working class people who have no other choice until the uh, the PPC came along of somebody else to vote for. And they should really be concerned about the PPC because the PPC are coming in and actually giving some some real principled stands so platitudes platitudes thank you very much but we're we're still here in this world and i posted this uh <laughs> i posted this earlier in the week and this is you know the world economic <laughs> world economic forum busties besties rekindle their friendship welcome to the new canada folks this is the world that we're living in this is this is the Canada that we live in, folks. We've got Jagmeet Singh, and we've got Big Trudy, 
in in loving embrace and it's not good for anybody <laughs> this is not this is not good for anybody terrible 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 thing uh, <laughs> that killed me though that definitely killed me yeah titanic <laughs> yeah that's uh that's the thing I have a screenshot of that post I shared at work. Everyone laughed. Libs and conservatives. Great. <laughs> Too good. Too good. But yeah, that's uh that's that's old Jaggy Boy. Jaggy Boy and Big Trudy. The Jag Trudy. The Trude Trude Sing. This is this is not a good alliance. This is not a good alliance. And not not only that, it's not it's not good for oh I, am I seeing a rose because you're talking about the new rose party? That's in Alberta. That's just an Alberta thing. The jag off. <laughs> that pick was great. Yeah, no, that pick. I had to share that. I just had to share that out because that is that is the new Canada. Un <laughs> until until possibly until 2025, ladies and gents. That is terrifying. That is a prospect I don't want to consider seriously. Honestly. That's terrifying to me. But that's that's what we're looking at. You get a good luck. I'm not keeping that on my screen for much longer. <laughs> but who are these? Who are these new newfound friends? Are they newfound friends? Have they always have they always been friends or have they always been rivals? How do we know? How can we tell? How can we tell? Well, we can go over to their other organization, the one that they um that they're more religiously following than the Canadian Parliament or government or country that they're citizens of. And that would be their World Economic Forum. <laughs> this is this is where they are. This is this is where their allegiance is. We've got our Jagmeet Singh leader, Canada's new Democrats, new Democratic Party. I have to explain to my American friends, what are the new Democrats? What's the what's this NDP third party you have? Well, you've got the left, you've got the right, and then you've got the lefter. So this is the lefter party. <laughs> this is the out to lunch party. The wef the Wefties. Oh my god, I am not <laughs> losing that one, Tony. That one's great. Thank you. Wefties. You got you got lefties and then you got wefties. Yeah, this <laughs> this is our government. We've got World Economic Forum. Uh this is the the new majority government. Deputy Prime Minister and Prime Minister. And the former Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland, who is, if you scroll down and read her her bio on the World Economic Forum, she was awarded free. She is a member of the Forum's Board of Trustees. Now, when this is all over, when this is all over, we need to uh, we need to seriously have a referendum in this country to make sure that you don't have other allegiances. If you don't have if you have other allegiances, I, I think that should make you exempt from uh, eligibility for running for office or being in office or a bureaucrat of the country. I believe uh, that's that's a clear conflict of interest here. A clear conflict of interest. And this is why we have our old turtle, Klaus Schwab in Canada, <laughs> getting his Schwab all over everything. And uh, yeah, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. It's, it's a, a massive conflict of interest. But I started looking more into Christia Freeland because she seems an interesting character, right? She... She wasn't on my radar at all for a long time. I didn't know what what was her deal. 
So I started doing some digging and I found she had a book on Amazon. I hope I'm not doxing myself with any of the info here. <laughs> but she wrote a book called Plutocrats. It's an interesting title where she actually rails against the World Economic Forum. She wrote this book back in, when was this? She wrote this back in October of 2012. So she decided she was going to rail against the World Economic Forum. She writes here, oh, let's just zoom that in. In the last few decades, what it means to be rich has changed dramatically. Forget the 1%. It's the wealthiest 0.01% who are fast outpacing the rest of us. Today's colossal fortunes are assumed by the diligent trolling of smart, perceptive businessmen who see themselves as deserving victors in a cutthroat international competition. Crackling or cracking open this tight knit world is Christia Freeland, an acclaimed business journalist, and at ease in Davos and or Dubai, Freeland has reported on the lives and minds of this new super elites for nearly a decade, grounding her interviews in economics and history of modern capitalism. She provides examples of the new wealth and its consequences. She showcases the three million bir dollar birthday a party of what birthday party of New York financer financier months before the financial meltdown details the closed door 2005 SEC meeting where U.S. government allowed investment banks to write their own regulatory laws and tell how the banks the Bank of Canada marks. Carney became a key figure in the central battle between a, the plutocracy and the rest of us. Brightly written and powerful, powerfully researched Freeland's plutocrats will be a lightning rod event in the midst of the U.S. re-election season. At, or election season. And then she was so clever about it, they recruited her. That's it. <laughs> That's it, folks. Now she's a board member. She wrote a book talking about how bad they are. And now she's a board member. Now, it's not it's not the only uh, history that she has. Really interesting um, history that this individual has. Now, I... Where was I? Where was it? Now, I, I, I showed this article in that one video <laughs> where I had the Hans, are we the baddies? Christia Freeland's granddaddy was, in dot, was indeed a Nazi collaborator. Oh, I said I said the bad word. I hope that. Blah, blah, blah. So much for Russian disinformation. So, yeah, this is by the Ottawa Citizen. She's looking sickly in this photo i don't know where they got that photo the news conference on monday by foreign affairs minister christia freeland was interesting not for the announcement that canada was extending its training missions to ukraine but for the question and answer about the minister's grandfather there have been ties or numbers of articles circulating about freeland's ukrainian grandfather michael komiak and his ties to the baddies baddies from that that time she looks like a monster wow some of those articles have appeared on pro russian websites freeland who is strong support for ukraine and is a major critic of russia seizure of crimea suggested to journalists that articles about her grandfather were part of a russian disinformation campaign russian Government sees Freeland as virtually, or virtually, what? V or virulently anti Russian and has placed her on, on their travel ban. Well, this, this is an interesting thing because there was an article from when she was like 18 years old and a student talking about how 
she was in Russia and being followed by KGB, or she was in Ukraine and being followed by KGB. She's got a long history over there. And it, it and it goes, uh, anyway, this article goes on to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in fact, uh, a baddie in WW2. And uh, he was a journalist. He started working the Ukraine daily DLO from 1934 to 39. He served on the editorial staff during the bad guys occupation. He was the editor of something I can't pronounce. Published in the uh, Krakow in Vienna, and then immigrated to Canada in 1948, glossing over a lot of the atrocities that happened at the time. So I, I had to do a bunch of research. I, I looked, I watched uh, uh, Roger Stone's film uh, Ukraine on Fire. Uh, checked out a bunch of what's actually going on because. <laughs> if anything will tell you not to trust the news, it's the Freedom Convoy. And while well, I've been following this, the the news for some time and just seeing how bad it is at trying to sell you stuff. And I saw the writing on the wall right away that with the fervor, just the glow in news reporters' eyes when, when they found out that Russia had invaded Ukraine, like just the dollar signs popping up in the media's eyes and they just love the idea of war and and how great it is to you know what was it they they hated trump until until he bombed syria like he sent rockets into syria what was that one video i gotta find this one second um the, i'm i what is it was it mike wallace or somebody he says uh i'm the beauty of the rockets. Maybe I can find this. Let's see if I can't find this. It was like I'm I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Was it? Yeah, Brian Williams. Here it is. This is just go into greater detail. We... Uh, just just a quick uh, preface to this video. The there was um there was a, it, it it turned out that it was a false flag attack in Syria. So Obama had said that I'm not going to get myself involved in this. Uh I'm not going to get involved unless there was a a chemical attack uh in Syria and that was just like the that was just the the whistle to hey send out that chemical attack and uh so what turned out to be a false flag attack in Syria Trump Trump as president uh retaliated and then this is the we coverage. see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. What did they hit? What are you convinced? They hit people guy they hit people that's 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 what they hit like this is this is the this is the insanity of the news media they absolutely relish at the idea of war and people getting killed like that is terrible that is absolutely terrible i don't support this one bit one bit at all so like and and people will get the wrong idea. I think they get the the idea wrong on purpose. They'll uh, because they they're picking one side over the other. And the Clyde, you're carrying water for the Kremlin. No, I don't. I don't support that at all. I don't support invading countries. But I don't. I don't think that that means that we need to we need to side with like some really unsavory people. And that's kind of where we're looking with this one. And uh, that brings us to a story that I had that I wanted to pull up. 
and that was this one that that came out sorry just pulling this one up sorry i know it gets dark for a minute we'll go to more funny stories in a little bit we will get there we will definitely get there but just pull the stream back up it it gets dark because we don't we shouldn't always be siding with I know there's like the the whole concept of like lesser of two evils but uh mm, this is what we're looking at this is what we're looking at here Trudeau Freeland met with Ukrainian Nouveau bad guy party co-founder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's... And was this a long time ago? Was this... Was this... Uh, no, we didn't know who this was. And this isn't a bad source. This is True North news. Like, this isn't some, like, fringe weirdo website. Yeah, this is this is a thing, right? So Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland met with co-founder and far-right fascist party in Ukraine, which was styled off of Funny Mustache Man's uh, bad guy party. True North, True North has learned. This is, yeah, legit. This guy, his name is uh, Andre Peruby. I'm just, I butchered that, I'm sure. Served with the equivalent of the legislative speaker of the Ukrainian parliament from 2016 to 2019. And during that time, he personally met with Trudeau and Freeland several times. And don't be fooled. This woman, Freeland, she's, she's no slouch. She knows exactly who these people are. Like... This guy's got no excuse either. He's got zero excuse. You got to know who you're meeting with. Like this, this is not, this is not something. And it's not like it's far off. Like even, even Wikipedia, when Wikipedia gives you uh, somebody's description. Oh, maybe I don't have it on there. I can pull up his wiki. His wiki and wiki always like, they make sure to give you the 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 whitewashed, not so bad uh, version if they like the people. Uh, they definitely say he um, he's he formed the bad guy party in Ukraine early. Uh, where was where was I? Early in his career, Perubi, <laughs> Peru, I don't know how I'm saying that. Perubi was an influential member of Ukraine's far right bad guy, bad guy movement. In 1991, he co-found the bad guy styled Social National Party of Ukraine. I mean, you can't make that up. Like, Neo-National Socialist Party. This is the Neo-Social Nationalist Party. A party focused on racial nationalism. That was their focus. That even adopted... The bad guy wolf sangle symbol and its logo i'm sorry you can't make this up according to a report from the jerusalem post which the jerusalem post would probably uh be keeping tabs on who those bad guys are for good reason as recently as 2016 perubi made anti-semitic comments he accused jews of sending convicts to settle eastern ukraine and trying to destroy the genetic memory of the holdemore this this is awful stuff folks peruby first rubbed shoulders with trudeau in 2016 while part of, while part of a visiting delegation to ottawa the ukrainian ambassador embassy to canada detailed the meeting which also included the then Minister of Defense, Harjit Sijan. 
This guy's meeting with the bad guys. During his visit to the capital of Canada, Mr. Peruby held a number of fruitful meetings with Canadian government officials and politicians. Yeah, okay, it just goes on to say, yeah, 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 we meet with bad guys, no problem. But you won't talk to truckers. That that is that is just beyond me. And then to get up to get up in front of the uh, the parliament and accuse accuse your fellow parliamentarians of standing next to uh, the crooked the the bad guy crooked crosses. I don't know if I can say that word. <laughs> I gotta be careful, folks, on the words that I say. It's just it is a thing. Is the thing, but yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. They're not scientists. <laughs> what? I missed the context on that one. But yeah, so I found that story. Found that to be, and here's okay. Here's here's another piece of proof that Freeland knows what's up. So Freeland caught holding pro bad guy banner in Ukraine protest. So this was. Uh, after the trucker protests had been moved out of Ottawa and uh, after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, they had a pro-Ukrainian rally in Ottawa, which, I mean, whatever. I, I've got no objection to that. Uh, but the deputy prime minister and former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Christia Freeland, was photographed on Sunday with a scarf promoting far-right Ukrainian national movement linked to b -b 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 bad guys and extremism. So while they while they're trying to trying to label truckers as mm, far right and all this stuff, when they're just like <laughs> not not politically affiliated for the most part. Um, yeah, this is the thing. Now, how can we know that for sure she, um, she knew that this was a bad thing? Well, for one, she speaks, she speaks Ukrainian and probably Russian dialect. So anyone from Ukraine understands Russian from my understanding of the situation. It's such a, a uh, integral part of the region is, um, the Russian language is, is spoken so often. I'm sure there are people that don't speak Russian, but uh, she definitely speaks Ukrainian. And this banner right here that she's holding, and definitely not distance, distancing herself from, uh, the translation for this is blood and soil. And if you're not familiar with what that means, is that is that is the uh, the calling card phrase of those b -b 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 bad guys from WW2. And it's been the calling card slogan uh, of these groups ever since. And that's what she's holding. Here we have a tweet that somebody pointed out where you have Christia Freeland. She actually had this post out so she put this, united we stand, we stand with Ukraine, and then in French, and then in, in Ukrainian, with her holding it. And then people started criticizing her and pointing it out. So she deleted it and re-uploaded the same thing, but with a post without the banner in the photo. So if anything, that's that's an admission of knowing what's up in that situation. So... My God, my God, these are the leaders of our country, ladies and gents. That's not, not ideal, not ideal, not ideal at all. So, <laughs> not, not cool with that, not cool with that. But again, there is so much to do with the history. And like, like I said, I've been, I've been looking up the history on this. And I don't know how much of a deep dive I want to get into, but here's an article from from uh, Modern Diplomacy from back in 2018. This is June 4th, 2018. How and why the U.S. government perpetuated the 2014 coup in Ukraine. 
So in this article goes in to talk about how the U.S. was involved in this uh, this coup uh, in the Maidan. Is it the Maidan coup? Yeah, the Maidan revolution. They some call it. For some people, it's a coup, and some people, it's a revolution, right? Um, this this was yes, yeah, Scarfgate. That's it. The um, the U.S. was behind this, but not just the U.S., but Canada as well. And I was searching around. Here we go. Fears that Canadian training mission in Ukraine may unintentionally help the bad guy groups. This is we've known about this. This was reported in 2015. This isn't news. This is the National Post. This is not some fringe website. You know? This is something that we've known about. U.S. lawmakers have voted to block American troops from training a unit with bad guys. Members that that's operating with Ukraine's forces. A move that raises questions about what safeguards Canada has to ensure that it doesn't help extremist groups. Canadian soldiers from Petawawa Garrison in the Ottawa Valley are preparing to head to Ukraine later in the summer to gain train government forces. U.S. troops are already there. But Republicans and Democrats in the House of Representatives are concerned some of those to be trained could be linked to extremist groups. Democratic Congressman John Con Conyers Jr. Oh, there's a legacy of John Conyers. Joined the forces with the Republican Congressman Ted Yoho. <laughs> no, get at what? Yeah, okay, Ted Yoho last week to add an... an, an an addendment, amendment to the Pentagon's defense spending request. The amendments passed unanimously by members of both parties blocks the training of the Ukrainian b -b 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 bad guy <laughs> paramilitary militia, the Azov Battalion. Now we've learned in recent times that the Azov Battalion Facebook has uh, given the go-ahead to praise these guys as long as you don't show their symbols that they fly, which uh, are very, very familiar symbols. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing, folks. I'm doing this research because I think that the news is lying to us. Like, they're totally lying to us in this whole situation. I think if you pay attention to Russian media, they're lying to you too. The truth is out there somewhere, but it's not what you're being fed. And that's kind of where I'm at. So, yes, yeah, sorry. I <laughs> yeah, the b -b 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 bad guys. It's the only way to the only way to uh explain it without saying the actual thing. But uh yeah, the truth is out there somewhere, but and this is the tricky thing right now. You've got NPCs out there that are, you know, I support the current thing. And you tell them this is this is a nuanced situation. I don't know if I want people from my neighbor, you know, I don't want my my kids and my friends' children to be sent off to fight for b -b 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 bad guys on either side. I I'm not really yeah. I'm not in support of that, and I'm not going to jump into it with this fervor because what we're finding out about what's happening over there is some bad stuff, is some really bad stuff, but we're also finding out that people are going over there to fight for something that they were propagandized into, and then they're getting there, and then they're realizing it's a completely different story when they get there. And yeah, not, not a good, not a good way of making decisions in life. You should definitely, uh, definitely take a step back. And if any time somebody tells you to make a, make a decision 
a hasty decision out of fear or out of the the uh you have to make it quick or you're not going to be able to make that decision like we, we've all been propagandized by that show 24 24 was one of those things where it's like get people into the uh, the idea of making decisions on the rush and oh my god there's all this ha stuff happening it's not how the world really works in general you can typically take a take a step back and go do i support this thing you don't have to jump on it you don't have to jump on it right away and that was the thing like I was reporting on the the convoy and then I, I did a few reports on this Russia Ukraine situation and holy cow I was like wait a second I need to back off and learn some stuff about this the the Canada situation is so easy for me to report on because I'm from Canada and this is my culture do you watch or follow jo Paul Joseph Watson yeah I do yeah anything goes is a great channel yeah it's great he's funny um, but yeah, if any time it's just, it's, these are used car salesman tactics, you know, don't fall for it by your politicians. Used car salesmen will say, well, I buy it within the next 20 minutes and you get this amazing deal. And, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> the deal's always around folks. You go to a website that says buy it now for 20% off. It's always 20% off. It's that's the thing you got to learn. Anytime somebody says insists on urgency, that's all the more reason to take a step back and think about it. Consult some people, learn about what's going on. You play us a song and see that sexy piano behind you. I need to I need to mic up my piano and get a get a camera over here so I can I can play some for you guys one of these nights. Right now, just like because I'm I'm using this mic and it's it's the 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 room noise it doesn't sound great so i'll definitely i'll try to, i'll try to work on that so i can i could play you guys some sexy tunes some night that would be great so what is the conclusion in all this i don't i don't think we have a conclusion right now and it, it definitely isn't up to me obviously i don't think um i don't think uh i'm we're we're not solving the world tonight, folks. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry to burst any bubbles. Um, but the world is nuanced. The world there aren't there's no black and whites. Things don't work like that. And um, what's amazing to me is is how like from a like from a Western perspective, when we've seen the United States just trample on country after country after country and then you see russia begin to do that and we've seen all the lies that got us into all these other countries and what's going on there like ah uh, hold on back up look back for a second and uh yeah maybe we need to reassess maybe we need to reassess this whole situation and i think um i think it would i think we need to rewind whoop, 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 all the way back to Eisenhower's speech about uh, the dangers of the military industrial complex. I think, I think that would be a great starting point. Go all the way back, all the way back. Because I think that's really what's gotten us all into a world of trouble. And we would all be doing a lot better um, had we not gotten into this national security state apparatus and it's just it's becoming more and more and more and it was you know it's over the years we've seen uh, you know the tsa happened i was i was what 18 when when september 11th happened and that was a, a thing that shocked the world and then we got this new security apparatus in our own country we got the tsa canada has their own version of the tsa Go back to Gen General Smelty Butter <laughs> Butler. I d I don't know if that's a joke. I don't know. I don't get the reference. But um, uh, where was I? Yeah, the the national security state came about, and when this COVID thing hit, I remember going to work and talking about it. And two weeks to flatten the curve, I said it was not going to be two weeks. 
And everyone's like, yeah, nah, 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 it'll pass. And uh, nope, nope, this is gonna, this is gonna be something else. And then it started ratcheting in, ratcheting in, ratcheting in, ratcheting in. Smelty Butler General. I need to look that up. I need to look that up. But it started ratcheting in. And I said, I said to my colleagues, no, this is, um, this is going to be around. This is, this is going to be like a whole new TSA. And it's going to be around forever if we let it. And that's what we got to. We gotta fight. We gotta not let it. Someone get Clyde a new drinking bottle. You don't like my drinking bottle? This one's great. It's like the galaxy. And it was from a, an old project I was working on, Maximum Underdrive, and that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. But now I do now I do the news. And I, I have a lot more fun with this. I, I honestly do. I honestly do. But I'm going to get a lot of this out of my hair. These talking about baddies in Europe is really depressing. Holy cow. I'm just going to close some of these tabs. I've got tab city. So I have, I have so much RAM in my computer just to run Chrome because I have, I keep tabs open constantly. Steady, steady flow of tabs. What story are we moving on to next? Oh, I wanted to go over some of this stuff. This you're not going to see in the uh, Western media, unless you use, unless you use uh, <laughs> Brave Brave Search Engine. I've, I I started using Brave Search Engine, and I find way more interesting stories. Um, then I'll, excuse me, ever find on Google or, okay. So yeah, I run, I run several browsers. Depends on what I'm doing for, uh, Brian, uh, Bran, <laughs> you run Chrome, not brave. Um, I run Chrome. I run brave. I run Firefox. I run, uh, I installed Chrome with, with edge, <laughs> but here's something you're not going to hear much of in the Western media, because this, this could actually cause some scares in the financial markets. Putin wants unfriendly countries to pay for Russian gas in rubles. This duck, duck go is not the way to go. Jeez. I uh, get, you might've missed that story. Sorry, James. Duck, duck, go is duck, duck, gone. Yeah, they uh, they told people that they were gonna censor their search algorithm, and that's <laughs> that's exactly what. But Smedley Butler was a general in the USA. Highly decorated socialists tried to use him to overthrow the government. Look into it. I am going to look into that. Hold on. Oh, geez. Chat's moving. I'm trying to highlight something. I'm just going to put that into my search over here. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, that's. I'm going to look into that. Thank you for the information there. The more information, the better. The more, more better. Things are more better. Putin was, wants unfriendly countries to pay for Russian gas and rubles. Why is this significant? Well, let's look into the story. Russian gas accounts for some 40% of European, Europe's total consumption, and EU gas imports from Russia have fluctuated between 200 million and 800 million euros. That's uh, $880 million, I'm guessing USD, a day so far this year. That is a lot. That is a lot of money. That's a big chunk of the economy. The possibility of a change of currency could throw that trade into disarray some European and British wholesale gas prices up around 15 to 20% on Wednesday. Why can that throw that? Oh, okay. The Russian trouble, oh, sorry, Russian ruble briefly leapt up to a three-week high past 95 against the U.S. dollar. 
before settling close to 100 after the shock announcement. Putin said the government and central bank had one week to come up with a solution on how to move these operations into the Russian currency and that gas giant Gazprom would be ordered to make the corresponding changes to gas contracts. Is my stream buffering on your end? Because it was just buffering on my end where I was checking it. <laughs> Let me know in the chat. Is it buffering? Um, with major banks reluctant to trade in Russian assets, some big Russian gas buyers in the European Union were not immediately able to clarify how they might pay for gas going forward. At the moment, we do not wish, we do not yet wish to comment, but we will be in touch once we have formed an opinion, says spokesman at Germany's Uniper. Moscow calls, calls the actions in Ukraine special military operation to disarm and deny la, la, bad guy ba, 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 bad guy if i it's neighbor ukraine and western allies call this a baseless pretext for war in, an, in the most npc voice out there <laughs> yeah okay war is his choice so anyway i'm not getting into the back into whatever the reasons for the invasion uh essentially What's happened here? This is big news. This is really big news. Uh, for some people who maybe don't understand the, how the markets work or what's going on in that, is um, so back in 1971, there was a, an agreement called the Bretton Woods Agreement where um, uh, then President Nixon got, this is before my time even, hey, and I know about history, so then President Nixon got on the television waves to tell everybody the, the dollar is no longer going to be backed by gold. They're going to be getting off the gold standard entirely. It wasn't entirely on gold anymore. Like it was loosely tied to gold at that time. Um, cause, but there still was a gold standard. So like constitutional money is supposed to be gold backed, gold and silver. There's like specific weights and measures for gold. But no, 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 no. In 1971, goodbye, gold standard. They got off of that and they decided we're going to have money by fiat. And fiat just meaning, you know, printed money, issuance of bank notes from the Federal Reserve, which is, if you don't, if you don't know this by now, is a private company. <laughs> it's a private bank that issues the American currencies. Oh, I need a mod in chat. Or any of my mods in the chat. Get rid of that. That one's got to go. Yeah, it was a terrible plan. So, uh, essentially, they got off the gold standard for the new Bretton Woods Agreement. And what, what was that agreement? Well, they agreed with particularly Saudi Arabia, the Saudis, to only buy and sell oil in dollars so energy energy any energy Bretton Woods was 1944 my bad sorry the Bretton Woods agreement was was ended in in 1971 when they went off the gold standard so this new this new um agreement was the petrodollar so the petrodollar came about as a replacement for the Bretton Woods Agreement. That's that's what I, I think I was referring to. Anyway, yeah, fiat meaning fake, fake money. But it is backed by a commodity. In the in the fact that there are agreements around the world that everyone will trade energy in only US dollars. Now, why is this relevant to what's happening today? Well, if and this, this is really horrible. Um, if this actually goes through, well, that'll put a big, a big cr crutch in this whole plan of the United States dollar being sold or being the only thing that can be sold uh, energy in. So the, the idea here is, is, particularly Germany, really messed this one up. 
right? Germany particularly messed this one up uh, for the West in general. The U.S. dollar could be screwed, yeah. Um, Germany just spent years getting rid of practical energy, right? They got rid of nuclear energy because environmentalists. I don't know why environmentalists don't like nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is great for the environment. Why? I mean, we you have nuclear waste, but we have nuclear waste facilities. The 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 days of Chernobyl are over. And uh, and modern technology. I mean, we're not using old graphite reactors. That would be terrible not not the case anymore so like these these was it three mile five mile island i can't remember the name of it in in the states they had a big scare but it didn't turn out to be anything those days are over uh modern modern <laughs> propaganda also stuff like much like the simpsons honestly though like you don't have to be that much smarter than homer to actually um be a worker at some of these facilities but that being said oh obviously like the engineers are smart <laughs> but so germany decided they're going to get rid of all of their nuclear power and you can't just like when you get rid of nuclear power like this is this is how the uh, your average environmentalist thinks right and I, and i hate to i hate to straw man people and i hate to put i, I hate to make other people's arguments for them because it, that's not fair hey when people do it to me but seemingly this is the argument like just turn it off <laughs> yeah just turn it off like turning off a nuclear power station takes years you, you can't you don't just turn it off you have to you have to find out where the new energy is going to be coming from you have to use up all your stocks or sell them off to somebody else. You got to finalize all the equipment you have to, then you're, then you're selling off capital. You're not going to hang on to it. The utility company is not going to just hang on to capital. You're going to take disassemble everything, sell it off. All the people that worked there have moved on. They, they get jobs elsewhere. Yeah. Did you just unplug it? <laughs> right. You don't just turn it off. And if, if you run out of, of energy elsewhere, you can't just turn it back on. You can't just be like, oh, I'll just turn on the nuclear power plant. It'll just, it'll go. <laughs> that could take years. It could take years to staff the thing, get all the capital that's needed, get all the, the fuel and all that stuff. It, it doesn't just work that way. So, um, yeah, Germany just went ahead and shut down all their nuclear power plants. It took years and they're all down. And now they have to buy their energy from Russia and a huge amount of it, a massive amount of it. And they made a deal. They did, made a deal to have energy come in through Ukraine. And that was that was a big that was a big thing. Um but essentially, a lot of Europe's energy comes from, you guessed it, R -R -R Russia. This is the thing. Now, if, if people stop trading in the US dollar, that is a big hit to the dollar, right? So if, if Putin really enforces this and and gets other countries to start trading energy in in rubles that will put that'll put the the ruble up right and if the ruble goes up i mean who cares if the ruble goes up or down or whatever right but if people stop using the US dollar that'll be a big hit to the US economy now the US economy they'll just they'll just fall back on their um all the their infrastructure and the uh, the products that they make, right? Well, they don't anymore. What is the the economy of this fiat and petrodollar has been propped up? Has become this consumer economy, and all the capital has left the market. It's long gone. There's so much uh, so much missing now. A lot of, a lot has been sold off to China. Mitt Romney 
was a guy who made his fortune on buying up companies, laying off all their workers, and then selling all the capital to the third world so that they can have people make the stuff elsewhere. It's uh, it's really, really, really a sad thing. And this is the, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that you got to uh, kind of prepare yourself for. Um, if, if there's a downturn because of the currency and yeah, that's, that's a big concern of mine. And I wanted to put this one by you guys to, uh, our dollar is tied to the American petrol dollar. So is everyone else's. This is why they went after Saddam. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Like all of us. So, uh, the Canadian economy is, is very, very tied into, uh, the price of the U.S. dollar, so we have to inflate our incur our currency to keep up with the U.S. dollar. So, like all of this inflation that the U.S. is seeing, they're seeing as a, as a result of of money printing, quantitative easing. They call it. I love that. I love that. You just give something a, a happier name, and it uh, it just it just it makes it makes all the problems go away. Give it a happier name, but yeah, quantitative easing. Uh, inflation, uh, we're we're just all in free fall. <laughs> the values of these currencies, anyway, they're in free fall. So we just we just have to keep printing more Canadian dollars to keep up with the printing of the U.S. dollars, or it it can cause problems with our trade back and forth with the U.S. economy. If our dollar rises too high above the U.S. dollar, it's no good. It's not good at all. Wanted to check out some other stories before we head off here for the night. Oh, I wanted to, um, since we're talking about currencies, this was sent to me by someone via email. He just wanted to pop this up. And I have to look this up, actually. Is it, Oops. Is anyone familiar with Coinbase in the chat? Let me know. Let me know. What is Coinbase? Coinbase.com. Currency trading made easy. Oh, okay. So, currency trading company. So, this went out to people today. Oops. Uh, where are we? Right here. So this went out to people today, and I got this in an in an email because I'm I'm not I'm not a customer of Coinbase. Um, but uh, this person wanted me to share this one out there, and it says, "Dear customer, starting on April fourth, Coinbase will introduce some changes required by Canadian regulations, specifically to you send." Uh, specifically when you send crypto to another financial entry entity or money services business, such as a, another cryptocurrency exchange, and the transaction is 1000 Canadian dollars or more, we're legally required to ask you for information about the recipient of the transaction, their name and address. Oof. For more information, please visit the Q&A here. Now, this is... Uh, la last time I checked, I, I knew if you did bigger than $10,000 uh, transactions in Canada, it always raised red flags. Um, but no, this is, this is now $1,000 or greater which with the inflation <laughs> happening will be like like making a transaction more than $100 in a few weeks. I I mean I'm exaggerating obviously but that a $1000 Canadian you have to give the name and address of the person. So the whole the whole idea of cryptocurrency correct me if I'm wrong. Like a big part of the cryptocurrency uh, allure is that it's it can't be tracked well it can be traced but um it's free it's free and you can do as you please with it crypto is not safe and will be centralized before you know it 
Uh, so, well, obviously, a lot of people are going to disagree. So, wrong. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not a crypto guy. But from what I understood, a lot... Oh, so 100% King Cracker says, uh, the issue is when you pull the money out to be physical currency. Okay, so it can't be tracked until you try to exchange it. Oh, crypto is 100% tracked and 100% traced. Well, yeah, because they each have they each have markers. Like they, it wouldn't it wouldn't be individual, uh, uh, unique coins otherwise. But the whole, I, from what I understood, the whole the whole idea was that you could you could trade it freely and do as you wish with it. But now it looks like now it looks like uh, as soon as you get to an exchange, the Canadian government is getting their little dirty little mitts in there, and they just want to get all over your everything because anything over a thousand dollars they gotta know about. That uh, was interesting. So it was funny because, like, uh, it was a bunch of years ago. The wife and I, we wanted to buy a car, and we wanted to we wanted to be able to negotiate. So we were like, "Yeah, we're just gonna bring cash." And they're like, "No, please don't." Because <laughs> anything over ten grand, they're like, "Not nah, can't do that." And uh, it's easier to negotiate, I find, with cash. Cash is king, you know, as they say. They always say that. Uh oh, we're getting Rees in the chat. Rees. Oh, what was one of the? Th oh, okay, this was one thing I wanted to go over. I'm gonna. I was, I'll save the best for last. Um. <laughs> I th I think I have an article on it. I just have to find it. It was. It's way up the list. And yeah, I know I was gonna get into the uh, the the Trump and Hillary thing. Which I, I think, as I'm looking for this, I'll talk about a little bit. I think it's kind of funny that Donald Trump is suing Hillary Clinton and a bunch of people for the Russia collusion scandal, uh, BS that they ran, because uh, it turned out to be all BS. It all turned out to be BS. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, apparently... Because he lives in Florida now, uh, he was able to file a lawsuit in Florida. So it's a federal court in Florida, uh, which means that judges may be favorable to him. <laughs> but he's suing for a big whack of cash uh, and damages against uh, Clinton and naming a bunch of other people in the lawsuit. And this is after... A lot of uh, a lot of the details have come out, so I, I think he waited until until there was enough evidence to actually be able to go through with a, a decent lawsuit. Got to double check real quick, but I believe two people are in jail for the Russia Russia Steel dossier thing. Yeah, I think two people were at least indicted. Um, but uh, it's it's looking. I don't have that much detail wise. I think it's. I think it's funny. So there's lots of this is going to be a big lol cow. Like I think this is going to be a lot of fun to uh just to watch happen. It's just going to be this like Trudeau Smollett like it. Uh this one's going to be a big lol, lol cow as it unfolds and as this lawsuit goes through because the media is going to have an implosion. You know they will. You know they will. Um but yeah that's one. Anal the analyst Igor Dish. Oh, okay, I don't. Know. Is that is that the guy that's in jail? Oh, he's in jail. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be such a good lol cow. But here's uh here's a funny one that I wanted to put out there, and uh, I think it's funny because because it's stupid. <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh. And that's the idea of Diagalon. And if you haven't heard of it, I don't blame you. But it's this thing 
that started on the as an internet meme. And apparently it started with uh, this content creator that I'm not even really I'm not even familiar with. But uh Hello. I hope he doesn't swear. Uh, for those or something. of you who may not know who I am, my name is Jeremy McKenzie, and um, I don't normally like to, to do these kinds of videos. In fact, I think they're kind of you know silly and um, you know um, just attention for the sake of attention's sake. However, and it's um, vertical. I have some very very serious things that I need to say, and um, if you care at all about what's going on in this country. And uh, what's happening right now, please listen to what I'm about to tell you. <clears throat> I'm a 14-year uh, veteran of the Canadian Forces. I retired in 2017. Since then, I've been... Um, Me, you had the pub and diagonal on. You know, kind of an internet show. Um, I'm a clown. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I like to make people laugh, as many of you have probably noticed over the years if you follow any of my content. If you don't... Maybe more recently you've heard of me through the news or through the House of Commons debates or now that has made its way up to the Senate chamber uh, where they are debating on the future of this country in a very serious way. Um, if you're not aware of this, the Trudeau regime has enacted what was previously known as the War Measures Act. Okay, he's going to go on. Oh, okay, this is long. Anyway, <clears throat> this comedian on a uh, <laughs> during a rambling I think here's the origin. There you go. And this this is why it's got the diagonal thing. So the origin and meaning of diagonal. What is diagonal and where did it come from? While conducting a live stream for his fan base Fans one evening, a Canadian content creator by the name of Raging Humanist, now Raging Dissident, wanted to do a funny stream for his audience. He consumed several legally purchased marijuana edibles and began, sorry, this is this text is terrible, he began sharing his stream of consciousness. I'm dyslexic, by the way, so this is like always like real horrible when I get text that looks like this. Eventually, he deduced that there was a divide occurring between locations in North America. Common, uh, specifically pointed, the common values were no longer shared along country lines. Essentially, what he said was, here's, here's the deal. People over here and people over here don't share the same values as people right down here. So he said, we need to make a new country. We're going to call it Diagonal." Because it goes diagonally down from from uh, Alaska to Florida, and it's and it, it was a stupid rambling, and it and it was just funny, right? It was a joke, and like some jokes, people uh, people take it to the next level in, in joke wise, right? Like it's not nobody's taking this seriously, um, and they made these flags. Now, what this is. This is so reminiscent of a thing called uh, Kekistan. And if you're not familiar with Kekistan, let's search this up. And this was um, back a bunch of years ago was uh, Kekistan. <laughs> uh, some of these images are really funny. Uh, so the land of Kekistan. And this was... This was during like when the run up to Trump being elected, they made their own flag. Keck, Keck, the, the K-E-K actually stood for LOL if you're like in some MMO game. I think it was uh, World of Warcraft or something like that. And hello from Alberta. Hello, Alberta. And uh, yeah, so... It, Kek just meant LOL, so it's like Lolistan essentially. So Kekistan became this like imaginary country, and then people would show up with the flag to protests and stuff like that. And their mascot was uh, was Pepe the Frog. <laughs> Feels good, man. And it was just a joke, right? It was just a joke. Here's like one of the dudes who was an uh, internet meme for Kekistan. People would, he was on, uh, 
what was he? He was on Fiverr and he would he would do speeches for you for five bucks. And so many people got him to say Kekistan things. And it was really funny. It was really, really funny. And uh, but then people got salty about it. Right. The media got really salty about it and called it this. He's still on Fiverr. No way. That's awesome. <laughs> Kekistan president launches summer merch fair. Uh, he's cashing in on that. Uh, you can't can't blame the guy. Totally don't never blame the guy for that. Um, but <laughs> so so that was a thing. So Diagalon is reminiscent of that. So I mean, I could search Diagalon. Let me just search Diagalon. I'm sure you get. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of images of it. Uh, it's just starting up, just starting up. But what you are already also also already seeing is uh, news articles where you have um... <laughs> what is the diagonal extremist group and what does it want? What are the group's motivations? Like, these are legit articles people are writing about this stuff. Like, no joke. <laughs> it's too funny. But it, but it's a real thing. People, global news, Diagolon. The man who attended Ottawa protest convoy arrested on firearms charges. Is that legit? Like, is that true? Did he get arrested on firearms charges? Because I think that would have been in more news stories. The investigation began on January 10th after a video was posted on social media showing a man pointing a gun at another man's head. No thanks. Trudeau used it as our national threat. Bonjour, everybody. Welcome in. Yeah, he got charged. No way. No way. So when I when I saw this story, I was like, oh, this is this is the Kekistan thing all over again, but a new a new version of it. Oh, that that's something else. Hold on. But yeah. <laughs> the second last video link on your page about Diagonal is his video, rant about its creation. It's hilarious. All right, let's check it out. How long is it, though? Google That's Earth. the question. Oh, Let's play. Minutes. Who needs who to live? These fucking idiots. These fucking redneck hillbilly fucking racist. Oh, my God. These fucking Nazis everywhere. They Whoa, have to hey, fucking language, leave. Language, well, language, language, Everyone language. is fleeing California to go live in Texas, who has a very strong secessionist movement. The entire government seems to be I try to keep it clean here, folks. Happen. So if Texas is out, Oklahoma's definitely going, Arkansas for sure, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, yep, they'll all be in, Tennessee, South and North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, probably, Kentucky, Missouri, Kansas, and then you've got Nebraska, Colorado probably won't, <laughs> uh, South and North Dakota, Montana, very likely Canada, and look who they border, Rip Alberta stream. and Saskatchewan. Now imagine <laughs> if that was a country. Not only would that be a fucking amazing country I would love to oh, live in, it would be a fucking F -bombs. superpower. Texas itself has a bigger economy, more landmass, population, and firepower than, oh, I don't know, most of Europe. Texas well, is bigger Canada, than France, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands combined. Like, Texas is bigger than all of this. Do you understand? Like, oh, what's Texas going to do? Oh, I don't know, be a super successful country on their own is what probably... <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. All of this, the heart of the United States would be cut right out. Oh, but we've got New York and California. We've got a bunch of anti four people with Bachelor of Arts degrees who are telling everybody that we want drag queen story time. That's fine. <laughs> you just alienated and abandoned. You just ditched out all the workers and all the military, by the way. 70% of the U.S. military is from this part of the United States. Yeah, I'll have that you is know. true. That is very uh, true. Guess whose team they're on? Not fucking yours. Not yours. Not Enough yours. And you know what? Man. <laughs> Super country. D dude, did we predict this on one of the old fucking streams? Remember it's diagonal country all the way to Al and Alaska? Dude, you know, here it is all the way from Florida all the way up. Super diagonal country. <laughs> you don't have any access to the ocean. Yeah, you do. Look at all this. this Super is all diagonal ocean. country. Ocean property. Look at that. Oh, 
all the ports in Florida, Georgia, Carolina, Texas, Houston. Oh, yeah. Fucking ship all that oil and shit right from right out Alberta and Sask all the way right down to them Texas refineries, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. There's well, that was the project. plan, wasn't that's it? My, that's what we got to do, that man. That was the plan. Because these fucking assholes here in Ottawa, they don't care about anything. Quebec wants to leave. These guys want to leave. These guys like their fucking welfare money. Manitoba's fucked. Ontario's insane. You know, BC's full of commies. Like, that's just, <laughs> this place is destined to fail. Okay, man, this guy is you funny. You can't push people around and tell them what to think and what to do and what to be all the time. And they're going to... You've got two options now. You've got widespread civil war, bloodbath, nightmare, Whoa, kids dead. Whole, no, nobody that's wants not that. an option. Or you can be like, oh, we're out. We're getting a divorce. Everybody goes their separate ways. So obviously, that's going to be the path of least resistance physically. You know, So that's probably what's going to happen, dude. Dagalon. <laughs> oh, what a, what a rant. That's funny. Yeah, sorry. I do try to keep it clean because I know a lot of people watch uh, with their kids in the room. So that's uh, that's why I try to keep all the content on the up and up. It's not it's not all just because because I, I can drop f bombs and stuff if I wanted to and be and be okay with YouTube. But it would get put into a different category, and then people would honestly be like, ah, I don't know if I can watch Clyde with my kids in the room. I'd rather I'd rather keep it clean because I I know. Uh, I know when I watch certain shows, I can't, I can't have my kids in the room. And the downside to that, the downside to that, is that uh, I'll, I'll like, oh, I'll put that on my list and I'll watch it later, and then I don't. So sorry, sorry, all those creators that like dropping all the f bombs all the time. I got kids in the house, and they're always like. If I get my phone out and I look at it for a minute, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter if I'm wearing so if I'm watching something that kids totally don't wanna don't wanna watch. They're just they're they're sitting on my lap and they're just gluing their eyes to the phone. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Yeah, kids are always watching. They're always watching. Live on Rumble. Uh yeah, I don't I don't multi stream at the moment. I haven't been multi streaming. Uh, just been doing it here on YouTube's, but I do have a rumble, do have a rumble. I don't have an odyssey. I'm going to make sure I better get some of the other stuff. Can I see diagonal, diagonal from my kitchen window? <laughs> I like that. Uh, diagonal a funny joke, but yeah, watch out because this is what the media does is they'll take, they'll take a joke like that because they know that there's, there's only like internet meme jokey people talking about it and what they'll do is they'll they'll turn it into this sinister thing because people don't understand what it is and they did the same thing with uh with uh kekistan and they did the same thing with the proud boys the proud boys were a joke i don't know maybe some later on people took it seriously but that was a total joke um when when that was first invented so that's uh antifa diagonal W2F, yeah, exactly. StreamYard, that's another one. Oh, StreamYard is the app. I gotta, I'll look into that because there, there's, I think that's what Viva Fry uses, right? And that's how he he uh, displays the super chats up on the screen when he's when he's streaming. I'll uh, I'll look into that. I'll look into that. But, ladies and gents, it's been it's been a good minute. <laughs> We've been, uh, we're going on the two hour mark, so I'm going to have to wrap it up. I, uh, I'm really having fun with these Friday night streams. I want to, I want to keep them to Friday nights, but I was thinking, um, there are a few people that I, I was looking to reach out to and talk to for, um, for interviews and stuff. So if I can arrange that, I want to do that on different nights and I'll let you guys know ahead of time that I'll be doing something like that. Um, there's a few people that were that I know that were at the convoy that I want to have uh, have conversations with, and I want to do that in a live stream format. So that's something I'm looking forward to to doing. Uh, but I'll, I'll do that apart from the the usual Friday night streams. I'll try to anyway. Uh, it's all a scheduling thing because this has turned into like a full time job on top of my full time job that I have as an auto mechanic. Uh oh, send quest. Thank you for the super chat. Cheers for that. Um, so full time job, full time job, and I'm a dad with kids. So 
making make it as much time as I can. Sometimes I sleep. Sometimes I do that. But everybody, I want to thank you guys for coming out, laughing at some some news stories. Uh, sometimes we're serious. Sometimes we're just joking, and other times uh, we're just naive. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway it was fun thanks for coming out keep on tracking